We're only a few weeks away from Assassin's Creed Valhalla's DLC expansion Wrath of Druze and we've got even more cool things to talk about including new info around the river raids, armies, mastery challenges, Irish kings and a first look at Basim's outfit with two new sickles. So it goes without saying, spoiler alert in Balm folks, all of these things are subject to change but they're also really fun to talk about and speculate on. So big thanks to Pedder for working his socks off behind the scenes. I still have no idea how you managed to do all this but cheers from all of us mate, loving your work and let's get going. So let's kick off number 10 with this outstanding Irish wolf hound and big thanks to Ryan, Cathal, Trevor, Kent and Liam for flagging this for me. For some reason I said sheepdog in the previous video but you folks are absolutely right it's a wonderful Irish wolfhound. So this has been found in the game files with the name ID of the ability being called spawn Irish hound and I think we're going to be picking this up as a optional replacement for our wolf combat spell and there's also mention of a Irish elk ability but nothing visually to show for it at this stage so maybe we can top and change between those two options. We also have a smoke arrow ability here here. and I really enjoyed smoke bombs in the previous game it's a bit of a nostalgia hit and we've also got ourselves a cool headbutt maneuver it's very very dramatic and Pedder thinks this is going to be called the Viking salute because that's the name that's been found in the game files and if I was to put money on it that does look like a bit of a Viking salute to me so these all look really cool and to be honest with you I think I'd probably use a lot of these in the game and definitely pop them in my loadout going into Ireland now in our last leaked video we did come across a lot of the ship cosmetics and they do indeed have names they're called Ullers Hunter Knights of the Round Table the Modern scheme, the High Elf scheme, the Werewolf scheme, the Charlemagne and the Knight Isu schemes and I'm told they're all located in an area alongside other settlement cosmetics and weapons so it does look like these are going to be part of a big pack that will be offered in the Helix store. So no surprises there but just staying on the cosmetic front a little while longer, Ped has actually found references to colour schemes and tartan in the game files. For those of you who have no idea what tartan is, it's a crisscross material used as clothing and in Scotland it actually represents a clan while tartan in Ireland represents a county or region where a clan has originated from. And interestingly, if we actually do take a closer look at that DLC promo picture which was leaked by Illumini Italia on Twitter, Avril does seem to be wearing a subtle type of tartan sash in tandem with her armour. So I'd expect to see more of this kind of design going into Ireland, which is really welcome. Now, Draw Raptor recently did a video discussing leaks and what's to come in River Raids. It's a really great video and definitely worth your time. Links down below if you haven't watched it already. And in that video, Draw asks Jose, one of the post-launch producers about River Raids. And he went on to say that we've been listening to the feedback of players and you'll be seeing more of the river raids at least once going forward. Well it definitely looks like we will be because Pedder has done some more outstanding work behind the scenes and he's managed to rustle up another river name. So some of you may remember that he actually unearthed the river Erif a few weeks back but now he's also found reference to another river, the river Barrow which is called Berber in the game files which is its Irish name. Now the river Barrow is the second longest river in Ireland and it flows south into Waterford which is a well-known city that was actually founded by Vikings so I reckon this may be some sort of potential quest line which would tie in quite nicely to what Jose was saying about players seeing the river raids at least once. But that's just optimistic guesswork from me. In any case it also looks like we'll be getting a similar raid format to that that we've already seen in England which isn't a surprise but it looks like we'll be picking up Lou's armor set and his spear by obtaining clues and raiding different locations to get those pieces of armor just like the St George's quest line in the rivers in England. Now we've spoken about Lou and who he is in a previous video so go and check out that particular video if you'd like a little bit more context about who this dude is but it also looks like we'll be picking up a clue that leads us to Frankia which sets us up quite nicely for the siege of Paris. This clue notes a river that may contain a legendary sword in Frankia and this could be in reference to the Durandal, the legendary sword owned by Roland, a paladin who was a high ranking officer for Charlemagne and was also included on a achievement leak by Jonathan. So it's all coming together, expect more river raids and more clues. Now coming at number seven and when it comes to druids we've actually got quite a few different types of NPCs named here. We have also spoken about them transforming into wolves and spiders in previous videos but it does seem that these particular druids are a bit more of an elite NPC that we'll be tackling called the King's Tribute Elite which I think is encouraging because more difficult NPCs is a great addition to the game in my eyes and it also makes me think we'll be getting some sort of druidic king to deal with throughout Ireland as well as the actual Gaelic Norse kings as well. We've also picked up two references to two Drenger in Ireland. Now they've been named as the Giant and the other is named the Leviathan. Now the Giant could be in reference to the legend of a giant who built a bridge of stone across the Scotland to fight another giant and that is how the giant's causeway was formed and the other legend the leviathan in Irish mythology could be in reference to a big massive sea serpent which was discovered by Saint Brendan who was actually the dude who went around England checking out all the standing stones leaving messages and he actually ended up across the pond in Vinland so when I was looking at this I thought we're going to get some god of war type monster scenes but I don't think that's going to be the case I think these are probably nicknames the Drenger have given themselves 
or earned as fierce warriors of impressive stature, similar to that of kind of the, the mountain in Game of Thrones, if that makes sense. And I also think that's the case because Pedda has found them referenced in the game files as military AI, so part of an army of sorts. So I don't think we're going to be having any giants or sea serpents as part of any Irish army. But even so, cool names, perhaps there is a deeper meaning behind them, but it's just good fun to speculate on. Now, sticking with the mythological creatures a little longer, which I know some of you will not be happy about, but Pedda has found references to some sort of hallucinogenic mist, which is where I think the mythical aspect of the game will be making its entrance, and that's going to be in relation to the druid transformations and the werewolves we've seen crop up recently. Pedda's also found these spectres, or the name spectres, in game files, which also makes me think we'll be picking up similar fights to that of the spectral bears in the Ostara festival, or a specific attack from a special creature like a puka, which is a ghost in Irish folklore, so shout out to Aaron, big donkey, great name by the way, Patrick and Adam for pointing this out in the previous 10 leak video. Thank you very much, my dudes. Now, this Puka leak was noted on the achievement list by Jonathan, and he popped out another leak recently, which some of you may have seen in regard to dragons, which has had mixed re mixed reactions from the community. But what I would say is the dragon is an important motif in Celtic mythology. They're often depicted side by side with Celtic gods and as creatures that actually protect Earth and all living things. Celtic dragons are considered the most powerful of all Celtic symbols, and they're used as a symbol of power and wisdom among its leadership. So it actually wouldn't surprise me if we do see some sort of dragon or serpent under some sort of hallucinogen drug in Ireland. But big thanks to Freck on our Discord for sharing this insightful dragon info. Cheers, mate. By the way, folks, if you got any value or learned anything new in this video so far, a like on the video would really help me out and would be much appreciated. So thank you. So edit number five, and it looks like we're going to be jumping into a very politically unstable landscape in Ireland. And that's because of the historical time period where self-proclaimed kings failed to maintain any sort of meaningful authority for any extended period of time due to regional squabbling between local factions, constant battling between armies, and it looks like we're going to be getting a taste of this if the game files are anything to go by. But saying that, just because these names are named in the game files, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're actually going to pick them up in game. But either way, it's still really good fun to talk about, theorise and speculate on. So what I've done is I've broken down armies and clans that are named in the game files into two different categories so it's easier for you to kind of get a better understanding of what we've got at the moment. So we have six armies named and five clans. So let's start with the armies. So we have Connacht, Meath, Flan, Ulster, Armagh, and Dublin. So the clans named in the game files are the Raven Clan, the Ragnarsons, Guthrum, Harold, and the Wolfin Clan. Ped has also found references to the North and South Army, so let's just take a quick look at what the actual army locations look like on the map. Now, these are the names of the locations that Pedder has found in the game files, but let's just take them away for the moment and place all the armies in their respective locations in accordance with their namesake. Now, I'm not seeing a very specific North and South divide from what we've got right at this moment but running with all the information that we do have it definitely doesn't seem that we'll be heading too far south in Ireland which would be a shame but as mentioned take this all with a good amount of salt I've just whipped this up just to give you a better idea of what we do have right now it could be all wrong but we'll certainly find out soon enough and all in all it's just a good bit of fun but interestingly, there's also uniforms and cloak colours in the leaks Ped has found, highlighting that tartan and uniform divisions do exist between factions. So what do you kind of make of this, folks? Reckon we're going to get open field battles? I do need to manage my own expectations because I'd absolutely love that. But if this game data is anything to go by, it does look pretty promising. Keen to hear your thoughts below. So moving on to Irish kings, we've got a couple kings that have been named in the files and a few notable historical figures that have interest to us, I think. Our first monarch is King Flan, who in the time period was known as the High King of Ireland and also known as the King of Tara, who incidentally was actually mentioned by the Ubisoft Bordeaux narrative director Hugo in an interview with Gamer. So the link below for that article is in the description. And another shout out to Access the Animus who also mentioned a post about him being one of the main Viking characters of the expansion who actually recruited many Vikings to join his war campaigns. Now our second monarch is King Dommel who is believed to be the King of Lenicester who was actually attacked by King Flan is the dude we just spoke about in 1880. And our third king named in the game and that's King Serbal, who is the brother of King Domnall, who is also the dude we just spoke about, and he actually succeeds him as King of Lenicester when he dies. So all three of those kings named in the files historically have crossed paths, which is quite interesting. This also ties in quite nicely with an achievement leak, which we picked up on the PS4 called the Kingmaker. So it's got actually got the picture of the pigeon coops, which is what Pedder found reference to in the game files over a month ago. So it does look like we may be accepting contracts and doing business for royalty across Ireland. At least that's what we 
make sense to me anyway. So in at number three, and that's mastery challenges. And we've got some more info and lots of speculative chat to be had on this particular topic. But from the game files, it looks like we've got four shrines that we need to visit to complete these mastery challenges. We then get rewarded with gold medals, which I'm assuming depends heavily on the performance of that particular challenge, and subsequently spend those gold medals with this spirit master trainer for settlement rewards and cosmetics, because that's what Ped has found in the game files. Now the trainer or master isn't specifically named, but what it does look like is that we'll have to visit this master to learn how to meditate to enter this Hugerheim, or Huger being a word to describe a spirit or spirit world, and of course my pronunciation is probably absolutely awful there, but I do know we speculated on Lagatha being in the game, but some of you legends pointed out that she has actually been indeed killed by Finnish arrows, so thanks to Omar, Magni, Nathan, Sitting Buffalo, Doodoo Man and Harry on that one. So it's a big stretch, but could we be speaking to Lagatha's spirit? Potentially even Cassandra. If I'm being honest, probably not. It's probably not likely going to be that. But I'm just throwing some curveballs out there to get the cogs ticking around. What are your thoughts on this one? It kind of looks like that we're going to be part of some sort of ghost Olympics where we'll also need to head back to Ravensthorpe for coffee and medals. But there we go. Now coming in at number two, and that's Ivor the Boneless. And it looks like we're going to be meeting his sons in Ireland. Now two people that have been mentioned repeatedly in the game files and that is Barrett, which Pedder found months ago but more recently Sixthrith, who's described in the game as a Viking brawler so both men are believed to have been probable sons of Ivor the Boneless. Barrett, in particular is specifically noted in the Irish annuals which is the record of history in that time period as being the son of Imar who is believed to be Ivor the Boneless. Now Barrett, the king of Dublin ends up being killed in 1881 and subsequently succeeded by his younger brother Sixthrith, who takes the kingship of Dublin for himself in the same year so does both of his sons know that we've actually killed Ivor in England. It's going to be really super interesting to see how this plays out. In any case, the more I seem to research and look into this time period, the more I realise what a great location for Ubisoft to place a game in. I'm very much looking forward to Ireland and exploring it in more detail. Now here we go. This is what we've all been asking and waiting for. And thanks to Pedder, he's managed to get us a first look at the Basim outfit and how it kind of looks and moves on Avil right now. Not only that, but as you can see, Pedder's dual wielding two sickles, which looks incredibly cool. And I actually play a double dagger build and this has secured the deal for me, quite honestly, because because I will be dual wielding sickles in season two. I also really quite like the casual look of Bassam's hood when it's put up. I don't know if that's the material, and I do wish we could keep it up in combat, but nothing's been found regarding that little mechanic yet, so I'm told. Either way, super cool. Not sure how we're gonna get it yet, but I'm really glad that Ubisoft have placed it in the game files. Really looking forward to equipping this one, and the countdown is on. Now, just as a little bonus here, Pedder has actually found us a brand new armor set, and this may actually look familiar, and that's because it is, because it's from the leaked promo art, and it's called the Dublin Champions set where its stats actually look to predominantly be heading into the stealth and range department. But look at this, Pet has also found the Kale Bog and he called this over a month ago and here we are, the Kale Bog spear in the game files. We can actually see it equipped. It was owned by Kukulin, a Celtic mythical god which we've talked about extensively over the last month and this has also appeared in the leaked promo picture. We've also got Kukulin's shield and I'm really excited about this even though I'm not a shield player and that's because there's this kind of shield wall-esque animation which looks looks absolutely brilliant and gets me more hype for potential battles. And Ped has also found us several more armor sets, some mounts, and some really cool looking weapons. So hit the notification bell if you'd like to be the first to know when that video drops. And if you're interested in joining an awesome community of people who love Assassin's Creed and other games, then check out our Discord. We'd absolutely love to see you in the lobby. Also, big congrats to Yusuf, who won our community photo competition last week. Great photo, dude. And big thanks to Pedder, who's worked tirelessly to bring us all of this info. Thank you, mate. And I think that'll do from me on this one folks if you haven't already a like on the video would be very kind it does help me out a lot and as usual coffee's on me